Hi, Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thanks for joining. Today, I want to show you, show you how to make a nail game with a carry box. Pretty easy to do. First of all, the game is very easy. It's a puzzle, actually. You take a series of nails and you try and stack all the nails on top of a single nail. All right, that is kind of a puzzle. But let's get to the box first. So, doesn't take much. I'm using these 12 inch long landscape spikes. All right, you guys don't have to use something that big. You could use a 16 penny nail. One thing I will say though, all these nails have nice sharp points. If you're dealing with kids, make sure that you file or grind the tips of these things off. Kids are notorious for taking them and jabbing them into things, trying to stab each other, or if they're really the long ones like this, pretty soon they'll be sword fighting. So be safe. Grind the tips, make them safe. Anyway, we'll talk more about how many of these you need and whatnot in a little bit. But to start with, a couple things. First, ask up front. Do me a favor and hit like and subscribe. Click that subscribe button down here, and I'll tell you what, it helps me out dramatically. Um, also, if you go to the bottom, there's links. All right? and those links are uh, things to the tools, the types, types of tools I use and those kind of things, uh, some of the materials if you need them. And then there's also a link to my blog. In the blog, there's another link, go figure, to a uh, dimension sketch for this. It's gonna be for the 12 inch, but if you use a 16 uh, penny uh, nails, just basically cut the whole dimensions in half and uh, cut all the dimensions in half and you'll be pretty good. Um, that being said, I may make one, I haven't decided yet, but I may actually conclude one for the smaller box. But I'm starting out with a bunch of scrap material here I have, uh, so I have some to, uh, plywood for the bottom. I have a piece for the top, just a piece of uh, pine. And I got a couple of chunks of two by four. I've already started milling down. And so I'm gonna have two by fours, some parts of two by fours in the side. Uh, should be pretty easy to do. It's gonna be about 13, 14 inches long and about six, six and a half inches wide and about two and a half inches, three inches tall for these. Um, so easy to do. So why don't we get started milling some lumber? Okay, you saw a real quick uh, material prep. So now I have my two sides. Okay, those look uh, perfect. And I have two ends, again, look perfect. They're the same width as the uh, bottom because it's all going just butt joints. And there we have it. Now all we gotta do is a little screwing, a little gluing, and we'll be all set. So keep watching. All right, parts are cut. Do a quick dry fit. Looks pretty good, generally. Um, now I think we're ready to, ready to do some uh, gluing. I'm gonna make sure the edges are flush, sitting square. I'm gonna use two clamps. Though it probably only needs one. So I'll continue driving these. We'll come back to it in a few minutes. Got my top cut. Did that initially. All right, you can see it fits perfectly. 
So I'll have hinges on one side, I'll have the draw latch on the other. So let's uh, give us a quick sand, break the glaze off of it. One side has a little bit of a divot in it, kind of a uh, scratch. But rather than trying to sand that out, I'm going to put that on the inside. This side's really a nice face, so outside face, just need to remember that. Okay, where do you put the hinges on? What I've done here is I put the hinges in. A couple things you might want to note is that I use three business cards to provide a little bit of a space back here. That just gets rid of the tension. I don't know if you've ever opened a box that if you try to put the lid on when it's tight, usually there ends up being a little bit of tension there. The front of the box uh, lid stays open. This way it's always down. Uh, it's not much. Like I said three of them. Uh, does another thing for me. I'm using the uh, distance here of the card just to position the hinges so it helps me out. Uh, what I've done too is I've taken these and you can see I've got uh, them locked into place with some uh, two-phase tape so you don't move around while I'm putting the uh, screws in and so I'm just going to drive these screws. I'll put the rest of these in and be back in a few minutes. Looking good. Won't be coming loose. I think they'll be pretty happy with this. Like I said, I'm thinking about putting these handles on. I'm not certain if I want to do that yet, but that's okay. Uh, last couple things I want to round the corners here with some sandpaper. And then I'm going to take this small maple block and glue it inside. The reason is I'm going to come around the back. Drill a hole here in the center, in through this, into the block, and then I'm going to use that, if you turn it over, as a support for the game. That'll be clear when I, once I show you how to do, do the game. So, a few more things, let's keep working. We gotta give that a chance to dry, but in the meantime, I'm gonna do some sanding. And the finish for this is just gonna be an oil and wax finish. So let's fix all these sharp edges. And that took no time at all. Alright, I'm going to get some finish while this is drying, make sure it's still in the same spot. So this is normally called a rub block, so all I did is put some uh, glue on it, rubbed it really hard, and the surface tension is what holds it in place. Well, that's why I'm not using any clamps or nails. And it's got glue all over it, so that thing once it's dry will never go anywhere. It takes about two hours. Now I'm going to put on this, Actually, it's my board butter. So I use this for a lot of scootery boards and cutting boards.
And there we have it. Nice set of handles for the box. Should be good. Now I just need this to dry so I can drill that hole. Okay, mark the hole. I already had an X where I needed it to be, so easy to do. Uh, I need to find out what my diameter of my well, come on. Find the diameter of my nails. So I took a wild guess. What I need to do is make sure that I'm close. And let's take a look here. Maybe not. There we go. So this should work. I tell you guys, if you don't have a set of uh, calipers in your shop, you really need to get a pair. I'll put a link in the bottom so you can find some. I am using Minotoyos. These things have been around forever. They last. They're great. Oh my gosh. I use them all the time. Now, let's give this a try. I've marked out how deep I want to go, which is about an inch, because I have a 7 8 piece of uh, maple in there, and I have a 3 quarter inch piece here in the bottom. So that should get me deep enough with no problems. Didn't let it dry long enough. I was in too much of a hurry. But that's okay. Now all I have to do is re-glue it. Which we can do, not a big deal. One thing I have to do though is make sure the holes are aligned. And we got it. perfect. All right, I'm gonna let this go overnight because uh, I want it to I want it to stick permanently. Uh, I'll see you in the morning. Well. I had a great time building this little project. Super bulletproof. This thing, you can throw it off a building. Nothing's going to hurt, hurt it. Um, it took longer than 30 minutes for me, primarily because I was making some decisions on the fly as to whether to add these handles and a few other things, how I was going to do certain things. But you should be able to get it done in 30 minutes, especially if you use uh, three-quarter inch material. I also spent a lot of time milling this two-by-fours down to the dimension I wanted, which was uh, one inch. And again, the reason I did that is to make it bulletproof. <laughs> so it's hard, but the most you could damage on this is the hinges and the, uh, and the uh, latch. So if you got something out of this and had some kind of fun watching it, or watching me maybe, uh, do me a favor and hit like and subscribe. That helps me stay on YouTube. Uh, also, if you go down and click on more, you'll find a bunch of links and things that uh, will take you to tools I use and to uh, materials and even these this hardware you might need so explore those you might find that kind of fun and then I'll tell you uh, if you make something if you make this or something similar do me a favor and let me know put it down in the comments I'd really appreciate seeing what, what you're doing and I guess on that note folks until next time hey good making okay turned out really well like I said box is full of nails could have made it a little bit narrower you can see like I said earlier but here's what you got to do to play this game. 
First pull all these nails out. Lock the box down, flip it over, and put one of your spikes right in that hole. Okay, so that's the whole purpose of having the hole. Next thing you want to do, let's set this aside for a second, is we want to make the game itself. Or we want to make the uh, balance point. And all we're going to do is interleave these nails. Okay, now here's the trick. Put this last nail right on top, pinch them together, and then lift it. Okay, see that? Now, I got one thing I got to do, which is to move. Ah! Don't go anywhere. Move the box over so you can see it. Pinch those nice and tight. Then kind of release them a little bit and you'll come to an equilibrium point. And just set them on top. And there you go. Easy as pie. So you can see how easy that goes together. Very simple, okay? Kids will love doing this. It's a great puzzle because we can tell them you got to balance all these nails on top of one. Most people will not get it. So you'll find those one or two that have seen this before, and because they have, it's easy for them. The rest of everybody else is going to struggle a bit. So tear it out. It's pretty simple. Pop it off. Lay it down. Everything goes back in the box. So this is a great this is a great game for Cub Scouts. It's a great game to entertain Cub Scout parents, by the way. And same with Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts will actually love this. Trying to figure the puzzle out. And there we go. All right, my last step in this whole project is going to be adding this. I'm going to wood burn this into the uh, top, which just nothing says nothing more than wood badge nail game. Paul Hardy, course director, who's my, he's my course director, so I'm going to do that in his honor. Um, I got some very cheap and cheesy uh, wood burning tools, but I don't need much. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll have a picture at the end. So, so on that note, like I said, hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, take a like, subscribe. Until next time, folks, good making.